Hey man, that was fantastic. And uh, man, we get a cl closing song. Shoot, that's even better. Can we close now? And then we're going to close again. And again. Thank you. And again. Could you please stand up, look at the person next to you, and say, your teeth are beautiful. <laughs> Introduce yourself. Say hello. All right, have a seat. So, uh, just got a few things that uh, I gotta, I gotta say. Uh, last week, I was just so excited to hear the news from Brian about so many of you folks coming forward for the first time, crossing that line of faith, understanding what the cross of Christ is all about. That uh, you understand that you slip from, from death to eternity, just like that. Um, one thing I, I, I want everybody to understand is. is you should never stop at the cross. Because a lot of people, they come to a point in their life and they understand they're a sinner in need of a, a savior. And they come to the cross and, they, and then they stay there. They forget that, that they need to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you can't stop at the cross. You gotta, you gotta go past the cross. And you gotta understand what it means to grow up as a man of God, as a woman of God, to uh, uh, just... Just know this, this is, this is uh, uh, you know, I called it, it's the Bible, but I call it the Chilton's Manual for Life, so you can understand the way you're to live your life as a man of God, as a woman of God. And um, uh, so, you know, that's why there's Sundays, that's why there's going to be Wednesdays, that's why there's small groups. And you got to understand that Satan will do everything he can to keep you from growing up, to maturing in Christ. He'll bring people back into your life that you haven't seen before. He'll try to get you to go down the roads and make terrible choices. And then sometimes you do make terrible choices. And if you make those terrible choices, you feel as though you're no longer worthy to be God's son, to be God's daughter, to, to understand his love the way he wants you to understand his love. And sometimes people just slip back into the, the habits that they had before. But the cross of Christ also is enough. And so for you guys that have put your trust in Jesus Christ, maybe for that first time last week, that uh, being a Christ follower is a, is a gas. It's the most dangerous decision you have ever made in your life because it will change you radically. Not only does he promise you eternal life, but he promises you an abundant life and a joyful life. And on the other hand, Satan wants to kick your butt and he wants you to feel terrible and he doesn't want you to have joy in life. He wants to deceive you as he best possibly can. So... Um, don't stop at the cross. That's just the beginning. That is the beginning of your journey as a, a, a child of, of God. So um, praise God for last week. I was, uh, I was on drugs. I was on a lot of drugs. Um, it's funny, last, not this Monday, but the Monday before, I had my shoulder surgery, and they... They cut some, um, well, they did the whole kit and caboodle, as uh, Dr. Mike Duby said. He said, we're going to do the whole kit and caboodle. They, they shaved this bone. They shaved some cartilage here. They shaved some cartilage there. And then they took a tenon. They pulled it back over here. They reattached it. And uh, they gave me some exercises to do. I'm supposed to be wearing a brace. I'm not wearing a brace. Everybody that knows I'm supposed to be wearing a ba brace, thank you so much for coming up and telling me, Ken, how come your brace isn't on? Uh, because I'd be playing with it the whole time as I was speaking. So, uh, uh, yeah, last, last Saturday, Sunday early morning, I did not sleep because I, like many of you, felt that I was tough enough, strong enough, man enough not to do drugs. And so on Saturday, I did not do drugs, but I made f up for it early Sunday morning. I took, <laughs> I took lots of them. And uh, it's funny, some people I go, you know, I'm oxycotton, codone, what, what am I on, honey? I'm on a lot of it. And, uh, and some people say, oh, I love those, can I have some? <laughs> and I'm like, how can you like those things? You have a dream within a dream within a dream. 
You wake up from your dream, you think you're dreaming, and then you're still dreaming, even though you woke up in your dream to see if you were dreaming. Do you, got, you know what I'm talking about, you drug addicts out there? Yeah. And I'm like, people dig that. I, remember, I sit up on the couch and go, all right, I am awake now. Because I had a grizzly bear in my house. I gave my wife a 9 millimeter. I had the 44, and we were going to shoot it. And I thought it was happening. Oh, my gosh, you know. People go, isn't that fun? No. It's not. I'm scared the heck out of you. So I really do appreciate your prayers. Yesterday when I had a wedding here yesterday, uh, um, the mother of the bride prayed for me, and... Uh, uh, she said, are you going to make it? I go, I'm pretty sure I'm going to make it. I'm going to pray for you just in case you don't. I want my daughter married. All right. Made it. It's funny, you know, I, I really do get dig bit and pray for her. I'm 55 years old. You know, I used to be like, now nah, you don't want to pray for me. But now I'm like, yeah, please pray. I'll take anything. You know, just, just pray. I, when you get old, you like prayers. When you're young, I'm good. I don't need your prayers. Just cash. I'm like, no, cash and prayer. <laughs> well, we are going to start uh, the book of Samuel. First, I would love to have a prayer, and then we will continue. Gracious Lord, I know everybody that is here, you knew they were going to be here. You've prepared their hearts, their souls from the foundations of this world that they would be here August 9, 2015, to listen to your word, to be encouraged, so when they leave here, they will not be the same person they were when they showed up. And there will be some nugget of truth that they take when they leave here, and it will make them uniquely different. And their friends and their families will say, what happened to you? And they will be able to articulate what you have done in their life. And that is my prayer, that we will all be changed because of your word and what you're doing in each of our lives. And you would draw us closer to yourself and closer to each other. That we may impact our communities, our counties, our state, our nation, our world. We love you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I think it was in 1985 my uh, wife went to the hospital, Fairfax County Hospital, with some friends of ours who had miscarried. And her and the other pastor and his wife uh, were there with um, this couple who was going about to have their first child, and she miscarried. And uh, I remember Janelle coming home and just totally brokenhearted about what had happened. And um, and and the world in Fairfax County, Virginia, wouldn't even count this child a child close friend of mine at the same time was desperately trying to have kids they had a temperature gauges out uh, he used to be called up in the middle of the day go home and he goes it's just like a task now there's no joy to intimacy anymore but we're dying to have a kid doing everything possible meanwhile I met somebody else some missionaries came back from furlough and were hoping to have their first kid and they miscarried and then my, my own sister years before that got married much later on in life and her and her husband waited and waited and waited to start a family they wanted to get some, some career things going and then they finally started and then found out that it wasn't possible and I remember my sister saying you have no idea, Kenny, how, uh, how much I want to have a child. My sisters are, you know, they they just having them left and right. And just her desire to be a mother, her desire to bring life into the world, the thought of maybe just having somebody else have intercourse with her so she could have a kid and lie about it. All these things going through this woman's mind, my sister's mind the desire to have a child, the overwhelming desire to have a child. And then here a few years ago, we hired Andy and Andrew and their desire to have a first child. They could, just couldn't, couldn't figure it out. They couldn't get pregnant. And then they finally get pregnant. And while they were here, we rejoiced with Andy and Andy. And they went in for their ultrasound. 
and you know there was no life. And they were devastated. What's up with all that stuff? Because when we start the book of Samuel, during the time of the judges, we have the same thing played out for us that God gives us this story of Elkanon, Penina, and Hannah. And once a year they would travel to Shiloh to worship God, to bring their tithes and offerings. And they would go there, and, and uh, uh, Panina had many kids with her husband, Elkanon. And they would go there, and, and he would give, he would give uh, uh, Elkanon would give Panina, his, his wife with the many kids, all kinds of offerings to bring to the temple and worship, excuse me, the tabernacle at the time, to worship and praise God. And say thank you for everything that God had done for them. But Hannah would just get one little offering. That's all she would receive because she had been barren. And so one day, the word of God tells us here that she was in the tabernacle and, and she was speaking, but she, her, her, her mouth was moving, but no words were coming out of her mouth. Before that, Elkanon is like, Hannah, this is his wife, one of his wives, and he's, she's like, what's wrong, Hannah? You know, why are you so sad? Let's look at this verse, because I think this is one of the funniest verses in the Bible. This is what every dude would say. You ready for this? Verse 1, chapter 1, verse 8, he says this. Why are you crying, Hannah? Elkanon would ask. Why aren't you eating? Why be down hard? Why are you so daggone depressed? Just because you don't have any children? You have me. Isn't that better than 10 sons? What a dingbat. You know, oh, babe, you got me. You know, what else do you need? You know, we thought that was like 21st and 20th century stuff. No, this is 1020 AD. <laughs> oh, honey, you got me. Well, you don't need a new car. You got me. Oh, look at that carpet. You got me. Oh, so there's water coming out of the ceiling? Oh, who cares? You got me, baby. That's all you need is just, you know, prime rib. <laughs> T-bone. Ribeye. They're like, no, how about liver? Hannah's depressed. She goes to the tabernacle. She's moving her mouth, but she's not saying anything, and... The head priest, Eli, is looking over at her and sees that she's moving her mouth. And, and uh, maybe he wasn't the sharpest priest in the world because he believes that she's loaded and she shouldn't be there. Verse 9, once after the sacrifice meal at Shiloh, Hannah got up and went to pray. Eli, the priest, was sitting at the customary place beside the entrance of the tabernacle. Hannah was deep in anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. And she made this vow, O Lord of heaven, of heaven's armies, if you look upon me, upon my sorrow, and answer my prayer, and give me a son, then I will give him back to you. He will be yours for his entire lifetime. And as a sign that he has been dedicated to the Lord, he will have the Nazarite borrow, and his hair will never be cut. As she was praying to the Lord, Eli watched her, seeing her lips were moving but hearing no sound at all. He thought she had been drinking. So he probably comes over and says, must you come here drunk? He demanded, throw away your wine. No, sir, she replied, I haven't been drinking wine or anything stronger, but I'm, I'm very discouraged. And I was pouring my heart out to the Lord. Don't think I am a wicked woman, for I have been praying. Uh, I have been praying out of great anguish and sorrow. In that case, Eli said, "Go in peace. May the God of Israel grant the request he you have asked him." Oh, thank you, sir," she exclaimed. Then she went back and began to eat again, and, and she was no longer sad. 
The entire family got up early the next morning and went to worship the Lord once more. Then they returned home to Ramah. When Elkanah, Elkanah slept with Hannah, the Lord remembered her plea. And in due time, she gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel. For she said, I asked the Lord for him. The next year, Elkanah and his family went on their trip to, to sacrifice to the Lord, but Hannah did not go. She told her, said, wait, wait till uh, the boy is weaned. Then I will take him to the tabernacle and leave him there with the Lord permanently. Whatever you think is best, Elkanon agreed. Stay here for now and may the Lord help you and keep you or pro help you keep your pro promise. So she stayed home and, and nursed the boy until he was weaned. When the child was weaned, Hannah took him to the tabernacle in Shiloh. They brought along a three-year-old bull for the sacrifice, a basket of flour. After sacrificing the bull, they brought, Eli, they brought the boy to Eli. Sir, do you remember me? Hannah asked. I am the woman who stood here several years ago praying to the Lord. I asked the Lord to give me this boy, and he, he granted my request. Now I am giving him to the Lord, and he will belong to the Lord his whole life. And they worshiped the Lord. So, um, if you notice in the bulletin, uh, the title of my talk is I Surrender All. You know, I, I started out by just reflecting on people that I know that have lost children. Uh, a funeral that I did for a few week year old little girl. Um, the desire for a woman to give birth, what happens when there's a miscarriage, and just, and so many times we, we cry out to the Lord and we ask God for, for health, for wealth, for, for meaning, for purpose, and then he gives it to you, but what do you do with it? How easy it would have been for Hannah to say, all right, you know, um, I, I think I should probably handle this for a few more years. I think I should go ahead and keep my son. I know you know where I'm going with this. Because you cannot, Hannah could not live with herself without keeping her promise and surrendering her son Samuel. And surrender all. I surrender all. So, you and your life, you know what God has done for you. You know where God has brought you. Are you willing to live like Hannah? And when you make a promise, you keep the promise. Isn't that just the coolest story in the world? She writes a whole song about it, and she leaves. Many of you have kids. Maybe your kids are older. Maybe your kids are younger. But I guarantee, if you're like me, you can't imagine. I, I, I meet moms that bring their kids in the Sunday service. I go, man, can you take your kid to the nursery there and they're loud. Yeah. And uh, they go, I think your nursery sucks. And I go, well, talk to Josh. <clears throat> He'll work it out for you. No, nobody has ever said that. I, I have moms say, listen, can I work all week? I, I'm a single mom, and I'm not at home with my children, and I just got to stay with them. And I go, man, I, 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 okay. You know, and I... And I, I and I realized that. Can, can you imagine this? First of all, her, her Panina made fun of her. You know? She, she made fun of her. You don't have any kids. Nah, 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 go. I got 20. You got zero. I don't know if that's what she said. But, but to finally, and then to remember the promise. 
You know, there's, there's women have a hard time leaving their kid in a nursery. This is, this is just walking away and saying, dear Lord, thank you for my child. And then, and then giving them to the Lord. So many times God will bless you in your life. And you'll say, God, to, what can I do? What, what is it? And he will say, remember, remember, remember. Hannah, God gives us a picture of an amazing woman who said, I surrender. I surrender all. We got to figure out how to do that all the time. Um, and I'm going to close. I'm going to say a few more things. But praise God, the band is going to sing us another song, and I dig that song. Right, Lil? All right, because band members are just looking at me like, do it. Yeah, come on. Luke, get up here. Great way to close, man. Uh, I got to ask uh, uh, Chrissy and, and, and Justin, come on up here. The Cowles, this is their last Sunday. Come on. They have been uh, with us for many years, um, and uh, Justin made his, yeah, well, he'll, they'll be back, yeah, they'll, kind of like a tumor. <laughs> oh, easy on that one, Justin. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, oh, my gosh, I love you, brother. I love you, man. Um, curse <laughs> I can't swear in church so um, they have been a huge part of who we are um, this is um Oh, man, this is what the ministry is all about. Um, we, uh, we got to bless them. They got to bless us. They're going to go down to Big Timber. They're going to bless other people. They're going to take um, the love that we got to pour into them, and they're going to pour it out on other people. And so, uh, you know, it doesn't stop here in Great Falls. It goes to Big Timber. And we've had other people leave that may be watching now, and they get to bless other people. And that's what the ministry, that's what the church is all about. We love we love everybody. We don't care what you look like, you know, what kind of funkiness you wear. Just look at our bass player. <laughs> you know, because it's, it's what's in here. It's, it's all about what's in our heart. I love you guys. Um, please, when I close in prayer, come up to them, give them a hug and a kiss. Uh, tell them thank you for their serve for so many years. And uh, uh, we got to hang out with their kids. They got some good kids. They got some... Big, you ate most of the donuts. We we probably can do away with a dozen donuts now. <laughs> they would come and go, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine. <laughs> Please join hands and let's close in prayer. Lord, we love you. We thank you that uh, uh, Justin and Chrissy have learned to surrender all. That uh, they have given time, resources, time and resources they have uh, they've stepped up to the plate many times and you have opened a door for them in another part of this beautiful state and uh, we pray your blessings on them we pray that as they go down to big timber that they would touch many other people's lives they would encourage people to grow in the grace and knowledge of their savior jesus christ thank you for their serve and for all the people who are about to step to, up to the plate to take their spot to serve this ministry which serves this city, county, state, country, um, that it's, it's just all about you. 
And so, really, Lord, for the short time, we get to rub shoulders with each other. May we do it lovingly. May we give it our best shot. We love you. Uh, blessings upon them. For the people who are here for the first time, they think we're a little weird. We're a little weird. And that's family, because all families are weird. We leave our requests at the most level playing field there is the foot of the cross. And all God's people said, amen. Thanks you so much for showing up.